Hey everybody, welcome to another new video. So today I just wanted to go over my new cast on crit uh, tornado shot ice spear that I build that I've been working on. If you watch the live streams that I've done over the last few days, I've seen kind of the build in progress and how I was kind of building it up. But today I just wanted to go over the full build guide now that I'm pretty much done with the build. I probably put another 20 divines or so into it since uh, the last live stream. So we'll get right into it. Alright, so first start off with the bow. It's a... Uh, it's a doozy to craft. Uh, I'd make a crafting video on it, but Lalkahol, uh, one of my favorite streamers, actually made a pretty well-made video on how to craft the bow, so I'll link his video in the description. So basically what the bow does is it gives you increased spell damage, uh, Ellie Pen, and then the socketed gems are supported by Cast on Crit, which your tornado shot triggers your Ice Spear. And then uh, I have the hybrid uh, Shaper mod on there for crit chance and then even more crit, crit chance if you haven't killed recently which help with bosses uh, Tier 6 uh, global crit multi not the best and then crafted attack speed. I bought this for about 15 divine um, At the end I'll kind of go over the overall cost roughly of what it costs to build but Then we've got just a regular as naths as naths mark um, It's pretty well divined, you know 15% uh, attack speed 56% spell damage Energy shield doesn't matter mana regen's nice as well but what this does is it triggers a socketed spell when you attack with a bow, so that actually triggers another Ice Spear. Gives you power charges, gives you Arcane Surge, and then just with GMP. We have the Maloney's Mechanism, which just gives you extra sockets and some more attack speed. And it triggers a socketed bow skill, but I don't use that part of it. I'm just really using it for the attack speed, uh, some life, and extra sockets. So, go over all of the actual uh, gems after the gear. For the ring, I just bought this uh, a little bit ago. It was about 15 divine for the onslaught synthesized ring to get onslaught on hit. That way, I can do uh, cannot be chilled on my boots. So I just hit it with uh, deafening essences of hatred until I got some good res and strength because you really need strength on this build. And got lucky fizz damage leeches mana, so I don't really have to worry about mana. Um, craft on non-channeling skills have a negative seven total mana cost, and you're done. I probably hit it with some catalyst, but. It's fine for now. For the body armor, I just get a item level 85 zodiac leather, so you can get high evasion. And then for this one, um, I honestly I just reforge defense in uh, the uh, horror crafting station. I got really lucky. I got some pretty high evasion and spell suppression and fire res, and I had an open suffix, so I just crafted on additional physical damage reduction because I don't have really any because I don't have armor. For this one, just a Curse enemies with frostbite on hit. I actually had a minion ring before, and one of the people that I was watching asked me why, and I, it was the cheapest one that I could find at the time, and had some more currency, so I bought a better one. Just some rarity. Just helps with magic fun. It's pretty much the only rarity I have, but any little bit helps. And did the same thing, deafening essences of hatred, until I got some more res, and got lucky, got flat cold and flat physical. Not the greatest tiers, but this is what it is. And then craft on non channeling skills have negative seven total mana cost. All right, and for the amulet, so I just bought this uh, just to get the plus one level of all skill gems. And then I got lucky and found one that had super high intelligence, as you can see there, and some global crit multi. And then I just crafted on non-channeling skills. I have a negative mana cost. I could keep rolling it for negative seven, but it works. The gloves, I actually bought these ones. These are about five divine uh, in order to get that uh, temple mod with the increased damage with hits against chilled enemies. And so I just searched for that mod plus spell suppression. And then found a pretty good one, you know, tier three life. Uh, had an open suffix, so I crafted on the increased critical strike chance and then elemental damage. If you've dealt a critical strike, since we're always dealing critical strikes, you're always getting to uh, that 22% increased LE damage. And fizz attack is uh, physical attack damage leeches life. is also nice and some flat fizz. And then I just used the Eldritch. Uh, currency to get increased effective marks. I was trying to just get straight up unnerve, but that was the best I could get was while well, unique enemies in your presence. Uh, I might just keep re-rolling it. Uh, this one, I literally just reforged cold just because I needed cold resistance. Ended up getting lucky and got triple res, which is pretty sweet. Um, and then it actually just had the life and man on there. I didn't do anything else after that, and then I just crafted increased elemental damage with attack skills. Uh, for the jewel, just a little more res. That's really all I was going for. 
I'll probably get a better one eventually, but this, obviously I don't use a staff. So for the boots, I bought a pair of boots with fractured T1 life on them, and then did reforged lightning because I was low on lightning, and I needed a little bit more of another res, so you can use the um, harvest to obviously swap a res if you get another good one. And I literally just did it over and over and over again until I got a T1 spell suppression. And then I got fire res on there, which was nice. And then do uh, stuff because it cannot be changed. Veil the Chaos Orb, craft mana, and then you're pretty much guaranteed to unveil at least one of the three movement speed mods. And that's the one I was going for because I knew I was going to eventually get the onslaught on hit ring. For the flasks, got Dying Sun to get additional projectiles. The regular Corrupted Blood Bleeding Flask. And then we've got Movement Speed and uh, Immunity to Ignite. Uh, just regular Evasion with some more attack speed. Use when charges reach full. And then Global Crit with increased Global Crit on there with increased effect. Use when you hit a rare or unique enemy. So, uh, as far as the gems go, we've got Divergent Tornado Shot. So you get more attack speed. Uh, inspiration to get Inspiration Charges. Just regular GMP. 2120 Ice Spear, Awaken added cold damage, and then increase critical strike support to get 100% crit chance. So for the helmet, what this does is, as I said, it triggers a socketed spell, so it'll trigger Ice Spear anytime an attack with a bow with a 0.3 second cooldown. So that's linked to greater multiple projectiles, then you get power charge on crit, and gives me arcane surge. Uh, for the quiver, use creeping frost, linked to bone chill, and then frost bomb, linked to bone chill. Creeping Frost uh, basically just, you know, creates uh, chilling ground. And then Frost Bomb applies cold exposure. Because you're, you're dealing cold damage, so you need as much negative cold resistance on the enemies as possible. This is pretty much just all auras. So we got Ice Golem linked to a 21 Hatred, level 3 Enlighten, uh, Herald of Ice. It's high of a level precision as you can run in order to get 100% uh, hit chance. And then a Val Grace. I'm also running Grace, but I also use Val Grace as well. Uh, for the gloves, just a low level steel skin because I have literally no strength. Link to increased duration and then Flame Dash. And over here you've got uh, Anomalous Mark on Hit. Link to Sniper's Mark with Blood Rage and then Enhance to give you more quality on Blood Rage and on Sniper's Mark. Alright, so for the tree, uh, it's a pretty basic. Uh, bow build. We'll go for the ascendancies first. Come down here and take focal point for increased effect of marks. Gathering winds, so you get tailwind. Uh, ricochet for chain. And then endless musicians. You get two extra projectiles. Let's we'll just come up here, work our way down here. Get life nodes, mana reservation nodes, uh, evasion, spell suppression. Can't be stunned if you haven't been hit recently. It's just personal preference on that one. Probably could take the grace one, but. My mana's fine. Uh, uh, up here, script multi. More damage, critical strike chance, life. And then you come up here, attack damage leashes life. So for the two jewels, uh, these are both intuitive leaps, so it'll save you some points. So you can take frenetic to get an additional frenzy charge. Uh, depth perception for more accuracy and crit chance. And then blood drinker, super sweet name, for increased max life and 2% life on kill. And then down here for this one, you take... Uh, fervor, I think is how you say it. Get another frenzy charge. Uh, survivalist to get some uh, Ellie res and one maximum cold res. Heart seeker to get more crit multi, and then herbalism to get more life and increase flax recovery rate. Uh, work way down here before we get to the large cluster. So just cold damage, cold exposure. Uh, gain a frenzy charge when you hit a marked enemy. We're always marking. Grant flash charges. Crit strike chance against blinded enemies, 20% chance to blind, and then increase critical strike chance against blind enemies, plus another 10%. So, you get the picture. Uh, max life, and then max life, reduce recovery rate. Come down here, calling strike against marked enemies, so you're always marking stuff, you're always going to call, and then increase effect of your marks. So, for the large cluster jewel, there's only one. Got blanketed snow, Doriani's lesson, and snowstorm. We don't use Snowstorm, just Dorian is Lesson and Blanketed Snow. Penetrate cold resistance against chilled enemies. And then Dorian is Lesson for Elemental Damage leads his life and increased Ellie damage. For the two mediums, you want to do eye to eye and repeater to get uh, projectile damage 
and uh, attack speed and projectile damage. The jewel just bought this off trade for I was like 100 chaos, I think. Uh, I was really just going for corrupted blood and found the increased reservation efficiency of skills and cold damage and attack speed and some cold res. For the watcher's eye, this one's this one's kind of expensive. So uh, you do damage penetrates cold resistance while affected by hatred to get more cold pen. And then gain a flash charge when you deal a critical strike while affected by precision. So that linked with uh, this one, you're pretty much always going to have flash charges. So this is, that's why I have them used when charges reach full. So I literally never have to use or worry about these three. Uh, I just you know, use my life flask and use my quicksilver flask. As far as the pantheons that I choose to use, I haven't finished this one yet, but uh, Soul Solaris for uh, fizz damage. Well, there's only one enemy nearby, so it helps for bossing. 20% less area damage, and then no extra damage from critical strikes. If you haven't, if you have taken a critical strike recently, and then 50% chance to avoid ailments from critical strikes, because critical strikes suck, especially when you don't have armor. Uh, and then Soul of Tukahama. While stationary, gain 3% physical damage reduction every second, up to a maximum of 9. You do spend a decent amount of time just standing around, firing your tornado shot, and then regenerate 2% of life while you're stationary. All right, so we'll pull up Path of Building so you can see that. All right, so we've got 6.8 million combined DPS first form, all projectiles, so that you don't get the increased critical strike chance or the distance. So anytime you use Ice Spear, that's generally the one you want to use. And, yeah, I mean, it's, it's super glass cannon. Uh, you're going to die a lot when you play this, so... Definitely not hardcore viable, and just be prepared to die a lot. It takes a lot of knowing the mechanics of the bosses in order to actually win, but you do do a significant amount of damage. So for the configuration, uh, you do use power charges, frenzy charges, nothing else. Um, I guess you do use tail one, but it doesn't really change anything. I do have onslaught now, actually. I forgot to change that, so 7.4. About 600,000 damage, yeah, okay, so... Uh, I do have flask active, that doesn't change anything. You have crit, you have killed, have been hit, doesn't change anything either. Uh, so just make sure you're on guardian pinnacle boss. Uh, the enemy is blinded, they are chilled, they are frozen, and because we're basing this off a boss, they are unnerved. Now if you look at the uber pinnacle boss, you're doing 2 million damage, so you can do ubers. You just really gotta know those mechanics. Pull up a little spreadsheet here so you can see the total cost. Uh, roughly of what it would cost to buy all of the items here. So the bow is about 15 divine quivers, 25 just regular Milanis. About 50 C for just a non-enchanted as an S. For the additional ice spear one, it's like 15 to 20 divine. Other armor is just one divine zodiac. Uh, to pre-buy it, you can craft it yourself though. Gloves about five divine, boots five divine as well. Amulet five divine, the 15 divine onslaught ring. About three divine for that frostbite on hit ring. The belt costs about three divine, 1.4 divine each for the intuitive leaps. And the watcher's eye is about 4.5, the large cluster 7, and then medium cluster 100, and the other medium 70 C. So you're looking at about 67 divine total uh, if you were to just buy all of these outright instead of crafting them. All right, well, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to like the video, drop me a comment if you have any questions, as always. And please hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying the content because it really does help me out. I'll be going live a little bit more often uh, in the coming weeks. So be sure to hit that notification bell so you get notified when I go live and also when I post a new video.